Do your banjo skills disappear whenever you try to capture them on video? Let's talk about that. So has this ever happened to you? You want to make a video of yourself playing a tune that you've played a thousand times before without a hitch, but as soon as the video camera turns on, suddenly you can't seem to get even halfway through the tune without flubbing it. I've read a number of anecdotes about this on banjo forums, and then I experienced it myself big time when I started up this YouTube blog about a month ago. Remember Michigan J. Frog from old Looney Tunes cartoons who would sing and dance endlessly for the hapless guy who found him? But as soon as the guy tried to show him to anyone else, Michigan would just sit there like a bump on a log and croak out ribbit. That's what it feels like. I can play tunes to my heart's content when I'm sitting alone with my banjo, but point the video camera in my direction and suddenly my 40 years of being a banjo player goes right out the window and I'm just sitting there going ribbit. It's wicked frustrating, of course, and I've been giving a lot of thought to why this happens. It's the kind of question that really cries out for someone with some expertise in human social behavior to address. And fortunately, it just happens to be the case that for my day job, I just happen to be a social psychologist. So I do have some insight on this. If we're willing to allow that the camera is really just acting as a proxy for the presence of human observers, then this is actually one of the earliest questions that researchers in the field of social psychology tried to answer. How does being in the presence of other people affect our ability to perform a task? That early research showed that we often perform a task much better when others are present, a phenomenon known as social facilitation. If you haven't experienced this yourself, you've probably witnessed it in other people, such as the band members who just walk through their songs lazily during rehearsals, but then knock them dead when they're on the stage, or the, or the Olympic athlete who suddenly turns in the performance of her life when she's in the stadium in front of thousands of spectators. Something about being watched, or even just being in the presence of others, often gives us the extra motivation and energy to perform to the best of our ability. But clearly, that's not the experience that I'm having, and perhaps that you're having, when we're trying to record ourselves playing banjo. We're having the exact opposite experience, where the presence of others is making a normally good performance turn to shit. That's a phenomenon known as social inhibition, and follow-up research on the social facilitation effect ran into this enormous roadblock, whereby the presence of others sometimes facilitated performance and sometimes inhibited it, in ways that seemed impossible to predict, greatly frustrating the researchers and leaving us uh, for a long time with more questions than answers. Finally, social psychologist Robert Zion solved the riddle when he proposed his drive theory of social facilitation, which says that what the presence of others really does is that it increases our arousal. That is, it makes us feel more activated and alert. It's actually this state of heightened arousal that then influences our performance on a task, but the kind of influence it has depends entirely on the nature of the task. If it's a simple task, or a more complex task that we've mastered to the point of automaticity, that is, you could do it without thinking, so you might say it's like falling off a log, then heightened arousal tends to facilitate our performance. But if it's a complex task that we haven't yet mastered to the point of automaticity, then heightened arousal tends to inhibit our performance. Why the difference? Because being in a state of heightened arousal tends to make us just react in ways that are more habitual rather than thoughtful. That is, it tends to trigger whatever our default or dominant response is. So if the task is to do something that we already automatically tend to do, then the presence of others will facilitate it. But if the task requires our focused effort and concentration to accomplish, then being aroused by the presence of others is going to tend to make us flub it. We can engage in the kind of concentration it takes to do an effortful, complex task when we're calm and relaxed. But the presence of others raises the bar by taking away a lot of our ability to maintain that kind of effortful focus. And instead, we revert to simpler, more dominant, default kinds of responses that are usually incorrect for the task. So if that's what's been happening to you, that turning on the camera with its implication of now having other people watching you suddenly inhibits your performance, 
One obvious explanation is that perhaps you just haven't yet learned the task to the point of automaticity. Perhaps you have too great a need to focus effortfully on your playing in order to do it correctly, and you just don't have the bandwidth to do that anymore once the camera triggers this heightened state of arousal in you. If that's the case, then the answer is obvious. You just need more practice. Just keep drilling that tune into your muscle memory until you truly can just bang it out on the spot without having to think about what you're doing. Now that said, I'm going to bet that that's not actually the case for most of you, just as it's not the case for me. If you're like me, you've been frustrated by the fact that even tunes that you absolutely have mastered, ones that you've been banging out for years, suddenly seem impossible to get through in front of a camera. Sometimes I can't even get through the first measure without it falling apart. Hell, once I started trying to make tutorial videos, I found that all of a sudden I couldn't even re reliably execute the most basic banjo playing movements, such as a brush thumb, without flubbing it half the time. It's as if my nerves were making my hands and arms just jerk around in all kinds of detrimental ways. That kind of experience is obviously completely contrary to what the drive theory of social facilitation would predict, which makes it difficult to explain. Why is my well-learned banjo playing skill inhibited rather than facilitated by the implied presence of others? I'm not aware of any research that directly addresses this question, but after a lot of careful consideration, I do have a hypothesis that I can share with you. My hypothesis is that the presence of others in the form of a video camera isn't just producing heightened arousal. It's also changing what the task is. Specifically, it's changing from a well-learned automatic skill to one that isn't well-learned and that does require effortful focus. When I'm just alone in my house playing banjo by myself, for myself, with no cameras around and no one else around either, my goal is simply to make music to amuse myself. That's how I think about it. I'm making music. I'm playing a tune. I'm not executing a series of pull-offs and drop thumbs. I'm not worrying about my timing or my technique. I'm thinking about the task holistically as simply making music and enjoying the tune that comes out even if it has a few mistakes in it, rather than thinking about the task analytically in terms of the sequence of individual steps and how well I'm executing each one of those steps along the way. It's that holistic task of simply playing the tune that I've learned to the point of mastery and that I can do effortlessly. But once the camera comes out, I'm no longer thinking about the task that way. Suddenly, I'm thinking about how this is going to be the one performance of this tune that is going to be on YouTube for everyone to see. The one performance that people will be judging my ability on, or perhaps the one performance that other people are going to watch carefully and try to imitate. So now, I'm really focused on doing it right. I'm thinking much more analytically about every aspect of my technique. I mean, I better be sure that I'm fretting those notes cleanly right behind the frets, and that my timing is impeccable and doesn't slow down or speed up, and that my hammer-ons are clean and my pull-offs are snappy, and I'm thinking that any single mistake is unacceptable because then this isn't a performance worth preserving for posterity. And that's just not at all what I'm usually doing. That is not at all the task that I've mastered to automaticity. That is, in fact, an entirely different, novel, unfamiliar task, and one that not only requires a lot of effortful focus, but worse, it's one that magnifies my already heightened arousal by also heightening the stakes. So with all that effortful concentration on perfection and all that physiological arousal, it's no wonder that uh, my performance is being greatly inhibited. So what can I do about this problem? And what can you do if this has also been your experience? Well, as I see it, we have to bring these tasks into alignment so that they're no longer two distinct tasks. And there are two ways to accomplish that. One is to make the on-camera task more like the off-camera task, and the other is to make the off-camera task into the on-camera task. And happily, these are not mutually exclusive strategies. We can do both. Making the on-camera task more like the off-camera task means that when the camera comes out, we have to think about the task holistically, just like we're so used to doing when we are just playing banjo for ourselves, rather than switching into that analytic mode. We have to remind ourselves, I'm just making music here like I always do. This is nothing special or different. If I can make the music happen, it doesn't matter what my technique was. 
All that matters is that whatever I was doing worked. Just focus on playing the tune, which is already something you can do without thinking. If you can approach it that way, then you're attempting the task that you've already practiced a thousand times to automaticity, and your heightened state of arousal may even facilitate it, at least theoretically, but at least it shouldn't inhibit it as much as it does when you switch into that analytical mode and focus on your technique and on trying to execute each step perfectly. So that's strategy one. Stop reframing the task. Stop thinking about it in new and different ways. You're not performing for the camera, you're just playing a tune. And if you make a mistake, big deal, just keep going. Just finish playing the tune the way you always do when you're alone. It may turn out that any mistakes you think you made aren't even noticeable in the recording, or they may greatly be outshined by the rest of your playing, or they may not even sound like mistakes to anyone but you. And you could play through the tune again anyway, just like you probably usually do. Again, just focusing on making music. And then afterwards, you can select the best version you were able to make happen, even if it's not a perfect version. Stop turning the task into something else. Just relax and do your usual thing. Strategy two is to turn the off-camera task into the on-camera task. By that I mean stop giving the camera special significance. If you habituate yourself to it, it won't arouse you quite so much. So try turning on the camera every time you play banjo not just when you want to make a video to show others. Have the camera running when you're just playing tunes for yourself and during your practice session and when you're just noodling around. Record it all every time until the camera starts just fading into the background. You're not showing the videos to anyone or even watching them yourself. You don't even have to save them. Just be making them so that having the camera on becomes part of your routine, part of the banjo playing task that you've already mastered to automaticity. That way, when you do want to make a video that matters, nothing changes. It's still the same task that you're very well accustomed to and can do without thinking. And as a bonus, maybe you'll find that you never actually have to try to make a video that matters at all, because with the camera on all the time, you're already capturing all the times that you just happen to bang out a perfect performance of a tune without even trying. So this strategy might even solve the problem in two ways. Now to be clear, at the moment, these are just the best ideas that I have. They aren't proven strategies, at least not yet, because I'm still very much in the throes of having this problem myself. I'm not suggesting that uh, this is what's worked for me. Right now, it's just what I'm trying. But I do have good reason to think that these strategies will work, or at least that they'll help, and that's why I'm sharing them with you today. Feel free to let me know in the comments what you think, and especially, let us know if you've had any success overcoming this issue yourself and what worked for you. Thanks so much for watching. If you like this video, I hope you'll check out my other videos on this channel where I just share my enthusiasm for open back banjos and claw hammer banjo playing. I'll keep making more, and certainly your likes and comments and your subscriptions if you're so inclined will encourage me a lot in that regard. Thanks again, take care, and happy claw hammering.